Hi everyone, today we're going to be colouring these little mittens. These are from day 15 of Johanna Basswood's Inky Advent Calendar. Now, I don't know if you remember, we had a scarf earlier on, um, um, I think it was day three, so I thought I might do the mittens to match the scarf, but add a few more little tweaks. Now, the first thing I notice is we've got this lovely um, sort of twisted vine which um, looks very cute. It reminds me of um, when I was little and um, I used to have my um, mittens were all joined together with a little cord. So I don't know if you, um, if you had the same thing. So we're going to use this selection of Ergosoft pencils, number 52, number 3, number 29 and number 11. I'm not 100% sure if those are the same one. I can look back in my little book. Um, Advent 3, 52, 11, 11, 2, 29 and 63. Now we've got one of these is wrong. 52 is the blue. What do we use for the blue? 33, 63, there we go. So we use exactly the same colours as we did for the scarf because I think we would have matching mittens and scarf. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. No, what I've decided, what I did think about doing was some slight texture to the mittens because I think the mittens look like they would be slightly rounded. So we're going to have a little, put a little bit of texture first using a grey number eight. So I'm just going to put a little layer around the edge of the gloves and just blend it into the middle to make so hopefully when we colour them in they will look very slightly rounded as if they've actually got some hands inside them like they're being worn. I don't need to take this too far in and hopefully when we colour over the top you won't see the grey you'll just see a different shade of colour we could do this with a coloured pencil so make it darker on the edge and in the middle but this is just an alternative way to do it and because we've got quite a limited range of colour with the Ergosoft I think it's easier than trying to do a darker colour on the uh, on the edges but we'll see so you can see I'm just putting a very gentle layer around the edge and I'm going to blend it out in a minute as well. Now make sure when you do blend it out that you don't use a burnishing pencil by mistake. There's some, a burnishing pencil will actually push the colour down into the page and that means that you will end up with um, not being able to colour on the top. So I'm just going to use my um, Prismacolor blender. I'm just going to basically scumble the colour around and try and get rid of any harsh blend lines. Now if you use the Derwent blender pencil I find it changes the colour slightly which is it makes it slightly yellowed which can be okay it depends what you you want to achieve whereas I find this one doesn't seem to change the colour of the pencil so much. There we go. Right now to go in with our colours. Now I'm going to start with um, red and I want red and white stripes at the bottom of here. Not red and white, red and blue. going to be red and what I'm going to do is work on both gloves at once. I find it easier if we've got something that we want to look the same, do it together. Otherwise I get confused and forget what I was up to. Okay so if those, those bits are being blue then that's another colour, maybe yellow or green. And so we might reintroduce the red again into this bit. So I'm thinking maybe this will be... Meh. 
maybe this will be all the colours apart from the one that's there so we'll just leave some gaps for other colours like that now this is similar of course you can't see can you? I'm trying to let you see both bits at once if I turn it slightly it might help so that bit there that's two different colours we'll do that bit there oh now we've got several colours we'll do that bit there There we go, I'll tip it back now. I don't know if that helped or not. There we go. Now, that's not going to be red, but maybe these bits will be. And the same on this one. It's a very noisy train went by and I think I'm going to do some of this zigzag in red um, stop that one, so it looks quite similar. There we go. Now, I did say I was going to do blue, so remember it's number 63. So we're going to do these bits blue. sharp. That's the problem with my, I've got a um, Derwent mini point sharpener and it gets really sharp. Now we need to decide where to go next with our blue. We certainly don't want it here but we want it somewhere in here so I'm going to pop one there, one there, hmm, yes one here and one here and on this one, one here. Now I'm not using any particular technique with this I'm just colouring in the box just an even pressure it's rather fun so we're not going to put blue here we we'll use that colour there but we'll pop a layer of blue here now what I've noticed about the thumb is the very tip of the thumb is different um, it's just a plain piece and I think I'll do this colour there. So I think that might be enough blue. Obviously we need to do this bit. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing here. Gosh it's, I remember having a really bright coloured pair of gloves when I was a child. Look, mittens like this. I don't wear mittens now. I like a finger in my gloves so I can Feel what I'm doing and I always wear black gloves it's very dull there we go now I think I'm going to want a blue on the end maybe I'll think about that I'm going to go in with my hmm, yellow green now I'm going to do that Yes, this band in green and this band in green. 
green. I need to make sure we've got enough yellow so it does show up. So this is going to be yellow obviously and um, yes if I do that it's green and then we can have those big triangles as yellow and also the end and I'm going to do the end green and we'll have a fair bit of yellow still in the gloves. Ah oh, that can't be yellow and that needs to be green. There we go, that's right. And this one, let's see if you can see, yes. And here. Now use whatever motion you find works for you. A lot of people say using this round and round scumbling motion like this stops you seeing the lines as much. And for really big areas, I think it's really important to do that because you see the lines more. But when you've got a smaller area, for some reason it just doesn't seem to show them up as much. I'm hoping the grey colour isn't going to make the yellow look too wishy-washy. So that's that. So now we're going into the yellow. Remember it's number 11. And we basically just fill in all these gaps. Oh! When I dust my desk, I find all little tiny bits of ends of pencils where I sharpen them too hard. And uh, they've snapped off and shot across the room. Luckily, um, I haven't managed to hit anyone yet with the end of a pencil. Sorry, you couldn't see what I was doing there. But I am really just colouring it in an even texture. Now, the little swirls and things. I'm trying to think what to do with that. I think I'm going to introduce a hmm, metallic or glitter. What should we do? Hmm. Now if I had a see-through glitter pen, so clear with just glitter, I'd go all over the mittens, but I don't. I only have coloured glitter pens. And I'm struggling to choose the colour because they look similar to the ones I have done already. So I'm wondering whether to just go out there and do something different like purple. I've got this purple one but whether that will just look really weird. It looks really blue in this light. But whether it will look odd because it's just introducing a completely new colour. Hmm. Crikey. Difficult. I, I've decided to go for gold. Can't go wrong with gold. It's Christmas. So I'm just going to go through the whole of this with gold. And I'm going to add some silver as well, just to sort of balance it almost. So although this reminds me of the um, little cord we used to keep gloves together, I just don't know if, you, if everyone's familiar with it. You'd sew a little um, knitted cord onto the cuffs of both gloves and then you thread it between the in the coat between the arms so the gloves hang from the coat and then you never lose your gloves if they fall off they're still attached to your coat well they're not actually attached to the coat but they're hanging on the coat there we go now I've been inspired by this piece of stationery that my husband has let me look at which has got lots of little holes in and I was thinking some circles of silver would be nice but I'm not going to use that stencil because I'll just smudge the glitter all over the place and it's quite small so I'm just going to use this silver pen and just make up some circles of my own in various places I don't know whether it looks like snow 
Oh, I need to do the top first. Sorry, you can't see. Or else I'll end up smudging everything. And when they smudge, they just look like a horrible brown splodge. Particularly the gold one. So you want to be careful. Oh, can you hear this sort of crunching noise it makes because of the glitter? So I'm not too keen on that noise. So I apologise for anyone who's cringing. My first one was big and then the others they've shrunk so I'm going to go back over and make them a bit bigger so they're all the same size. I have to turn it round so I don't smudge it though. Those too close together. But hey ho. tricky to do them without smudging them. I'm leaning across my desk at a very awkward angle. Lucky no one's here watching. There we go. I think that's enough. Now I'm going to tip it so that you can see the sparkle. I tip it towards my lamp. There we are. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thank you so much for watching and happy colouring.